center stage belongs to Matthew Stafford. After his last game, he's now across 3,000 yards for the season. It's the Rams and the Saints. The holiday season is upon us. We've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in Week 16. From his end zone, here's Rashid Shaheed. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. So here come the Saints to take over for the first time. And here's the new man under center after nine seasons as a Raider. Derek Carr is the guy. And he comes to the end of the season leading the NFL in passing yards. And that's not necessarily something you set out to do at the beginning of the year, but it's a good illustration of how remarkable and consistent he's been all season. Play action. Now it's Carr. And his first pass is incomplete. Now Charles, if you think about this offense, it's kind of a tricky time of the season because you're 14-0, looking to see this one out to the end, but you start to run into situations where guys are getting a little banged up. Maybe could use some time sharing, some time on the bench, just to rest. How do you approach the rest of this regular season? I'm telling you, you don't ask the easy stuff, do you? I mean, you created a heck of a situation there, and actually, you didn't create it. You presented it, and you're exactly right. It is tricky, because your eye has to be on the ultimate prize, which is the Super Bowl. That's paramount. But at the same time, how much fun would it be to go down as one of the all-time great teams and join the 1972 Dolphins as the only undefeated team to win a Super Bowl? Now this throw caught left side. A well-executed 22-yard gain. And this is a game where you don't envy a defensive coordinator. This is what you have to game plan against all week. This offense is number one in the NFL in passing. And they're clicking here early as they get a completion there for a first down. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. On play action, now Carr rolling to his left. And here he'll get it down to the seven. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. They fake the handoff. Now Carr on the move to his left. Touchdown, Saints! A great effort there with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Saints are on the board first on the road here in L.A. With these Thursday night games, sometimes you get those quick turnarounds. You wonder how a team is going to start. They started really well. Everyone's always wondering, going into a Thursday night game, who has their legs, who has a, you know the overall health of a team. But mentally, if you get that early edge, the other team might think to itself, ah, it's been a short week. We're not really ready to go. You might run them into the ground that way. That's why getting that early score means a lot. And he will get in to make it 8 nothing. Now a timeout here, at least for the moment. Looks like one of the Saints is injured, shaken up on that last play. But not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here are the Rams set to go to work on offense. And they're led by a man who topped the 50,000-yard mark in passing for his career a season ago. In year 15 now, here's Matthew Stafford. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two for him. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Now the first carry for Cam Akers. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. This defense for the Saints, they were very strong in the win last week over the Giants. And I'm eager to see the game plan and trying to attack them this week because... When you take it away four times through interceptions, what do you do now when you go into a game? Do you decide you can't throw the ball? Do you try and run it more? Or do you tell your quarterback, make sure you see your guys open before you deliver? On fourth down, Matt Ariza sent on to punt. Deep for New Orleans is Rashid Shaheed. 
He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. A 46-yard boot, but just 36 following a pretty decent return of 10 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out comes the Saints offensive unit and the NFC playoff race. Let's have a look at it. As we count down through the final few weeks of the season, these guys have nothing to sweat about. They clinch the top spots of the road to the Super Bowl. It runs through them. And there's a natural inclination here, partner, to say, okay, a lot of guys aren't going to play down the stretch. We've clinched. We're ready to go. But there's another part where you say, let's show the league why we're the number one team. Maybe you intimidate someone. Maybe you dissuade them from thinking that they can beat you in the playoffs by going out and being really impressive down the stretch. Absolutely. And you want to take momentum into the playoffs. There's also pride on the line for these guys individually. Yeah, momentum and pride. Yeah, I'd make room for them and put them both in uniform. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. A first carry now. This is Alvin Kamara. He will push his way down to about the 14. On the stop was Aaron Donald. This is second and eight. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Brian Edwards from 19 yards away and the Saints have taken a two touchdown lead now well this has been a flawless start for them they score they get the stop and they score again Charles complimentary football at its finest you just mentioned how they got it done they scored the defense got the ball back for them they score again that's the way you win ball games and they'll try a little razzle dazzle and he is in to make it 16 to nothing. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. Always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And this is picked up by the Saints. And they'll be inside the red zone with a ball at the 16-yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just, and now as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They are currently mired in a losing streak. Now they get the short week for the Thursday night game. Do you see that as a potential positive, or is this just more in what has been really a string of bad luck for them? Well, to me, it comes down to leadership, and leadership's got to spin it into a positive and make it an advantage for them. Yes, we're in a losing streak. Yes, no one thinks we can win, but we have the resources we need right here in this room. Let's go ahead and play better. Let's hang together and shock the world a little bit put it all together they've got a chance of coming out with a W throwing on third down Stafford and that will be incomplete partner I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up in man coverage but on that play they held up quite well Matt Arisen now on to punt this one away first kick 47 this one looks good as well take it at the 37 That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And they will take over first and 10. The New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. And listen, these Thursday night games, they're tough on the body. You just played on Sunday, 72 hours later. Hey, it's game day again, but 
I have to think a Thursday night game in September much more preferable than a Thursday nighter in December, no? Oh, there's no doubt about it. You mentioned how tough it is on the body. How about the mind? You're already tired, fatigued, right? Trying to battle for playoff spots. And here you have the quick turnaround. Now the flip side. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he's going to be shoved out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. But not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. They run with Edwards. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Brian Edwards, his third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Saints are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Week after week, Charles, when we see this offense operate, I don't know, they just seem to get more impressive. They certainly do, and let's face it, it's no surprise they're the best in the NFL in scoring. This team designs things well and executes even better. And here, it only takes a few snaps before they're in the end zone. That's how they demoralize teams. That's how they put them on notice. And they'll try a little razzle-dazzle. And they are three for three on two-point conversions as he is into the end zone for the score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they're going to mark that where it went out of bounds. So really good starting field position up past the 40-yard line. Well, not one you see often there as he fails to keep it between the sidelines, and that is a penalty every time, and going to give this offense better field position. And it's every kickoff guy's nightmare, isn't it? Because you don't see yourself doing this, and most of the time you don't. It's absolutely a miss hit, and now your team pays the price. Bad field position for your defense. The numbers for him from a week ago, 22 carries, 86 yards, and a touchdown. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he's been... The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and four. Stafford. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. And he's missed now in his first four passing attempts. The rhythm is just not there to begin this ball game. From the gun on third down, Stafford gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. On first down, Stafford here. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there, 22. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Play action, Stafford. That's caught left side. It's Higby, the tight end. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. Always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. Now he's got it. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good time. And he's got it. That's cup for a Ram touchdown. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Rams get a bit closer. Crosby with the extra point. And that'll make it 24 to 7. So that drives seven plays in length. And it ends with Cooper Cup on the receiving end of the touchdown pass. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Now the Saints coming back out, ready to go for this next drive. As mentioned, this one of the hottest teams in the NFL, riding that winning streak into this one. But now playing here on Thursday night, do you think that this helps or hurts their momentum? Well, ordinarily, I'd say it hurts the momentum because now you've got that short week. But when a team's playing as well as they are, 
it actually allows them to down focus and only worry about themselves and less about their opponent. So when you're playing well, you just worry about the things you're doing well and let the opponent deal with that. Now it's Edwards. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Brian Edwards on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Saints continue to pull away here in this first half. And, well, that's his second rushing touchdown, third total. He did have the receiving TD earlier. He creates a matchup nightmare all the time, doesn't he? If you pull everyone in trying to stop him running the ball, split him out or get him out of the backfield and throw the ball to him, he can hurt you either way very, very well. And they're a perfect five for five now on two-point conversions as he is in to get them two more. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. As we grind toward the end of the season here, and they haven't had the season that they had hoped, so let me ask you to play GM. Where might they look to make some changes? I think when you look into the upcoming draft, think hard about them drafting multiple offensive linemen. They've got to get stouter up front. And as a GM always tells me, Charles, this is a big boy league, and big people always end up winning games for you. Again from the 20 after the incompletion, here's second and 10. Now Stafford. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. Stafford. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Second and 10. Now it's Stafford. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Marshawn Lattimore. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. The mistake there by the offense, Charles. They tried to pick on a Pro Bowl corner in coverage there, and not the smartest decision. He reminded him that he was a Pro Bowl corner with not only the pick, but the pick six. And those guys who have that designation, sometimes they get a little bit bored in games because people try to avoid them. They absolutely love it when they get challenged, and it's a chance to remind everyone exactly why they were tabbed as one of the best in the league the prior season. The Saints offense and Derek Carr, they're still on the field, so they figure to go for two here. And they'll try a little razzle-dazzle. I don't think anyone in the building fooled right there as that one is going to blow up in their faces. I know they didn't tack on the two points, but I liked their attempt. After the interception return for a touchdown, I was thinking, Forget kicking it. Go for two. And they did. Oh, yeah, and everybody's scrambling. Maybe you catch the defense on their heels. They weren't ready to be out there. Yeah, it's almost like a sudden change, right? There's a turnover. You take it away. They stuck it in the end zone. Keep the momentum going. Give credit to the defensive guys for rallying and stopping that two-point attempt. They'll begin on the ground with Akers. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Second down, they'll go with Akers again. And he's got a first down following a pickup of about 13 as we will take a pause here for the two-minute warning. That's a gain of 13 first down Rams. Now Stafford. Got a man, it's Higby complete. A big play there for L.A. And even 50 yards. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Back to throw, Stafford. 
Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. But this defense is certainly organized and playing off of each other because the rush is providing pressure and the coverage is forcing incompletions and capitalizing on mistakes. When you get... And he's got it. That's cut for a Ram touchdown. A great play there with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Rams are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Extra point up and good by Crosby. And the lead is down to 24. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Perry. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. They run with Perry. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Steps away. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. This is Perry. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. A.T. Perry with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Saints will extend their lead here just before halftime. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a rout. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. All right, we'll bypass the halftime show in favor of returning to this late season game with the teams coming back from the locker rooms here a bit early. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. This taken in right around the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. As the Rams offense comes back out, here is the NFC playoff picture coming into the weekend. A CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. Let's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late that wasn't enough to put someone away. 
But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Here comes the Rams punter now as he's on to kick it away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup, bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And it's hard to imagine that the first half could have gone any better for them. So what's the approach here in the second half? Just continue to play smart football because they got the other team down and they feel good about the position they're in. Oh, he breaks a tackle and he's got an alley. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Now a play fake. Carr. Throw left side complete. That's Perry. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. On play action, it's Carr out to his left. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit, they recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So that run is still... And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. A.T. Perry, his second touchdown of the night. And the Saints have got it on cruise control. So this, not a stat line that you'd expect to see. Two touchdowns for him now in the ball game, both coming on the ground. And while it may be unusual, it's obvious they found something that they like on offense and they can use against the defense. And I think they'll continue to go to it until they stop them. They're going to keep it on the ground. And boy, talk about adding insult to injury. He's into the end zone to tack on two more. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Now a timeout here, at least for the moment. Looks like one of the Saints is injured. Shaken up on that last play. But not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. On first down, they'll start out with Akers. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 85 catches for him on the year now, and the result there is a first down. On the counter, this is Akers. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Stafford now to throw. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Pete Werner in there to get him. And on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. So now Stafford and the Rams after the sack. And they're staring up at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. And this is incomplete. Oh, he looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. Here comes the Rams punter now. He's been terrific so far. This is taken at the 18. So a solid punt, but also a nice return there of 14 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. 
Well, this offense, this team, they are rolling right now, Charles. They've scored on three straight possessions. You look at the scoreboard, and they pretty much right now got this thing on cruise control. Yeah, and this is that time of game where you and I have to be prepared, right? Isn't this kind of like the empty the bucket time where you have to go into your blowout material and make sure we have some different things? That's what we're staring at right now, the way this one is going. Car now on first down. Wide open receiver complete. Touchdown, New Orleans. Third touchdown pass now for Derek Carr. And the Saints just continue to roll. And they'll try a little razzle-dazzle. And they are just not going to let up as he is into the end zone here for two more. So the celebration in the end zone, but meanwhile, we do have an injured player. Always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable now. A win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles, but... Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto, and so the clock runs out. But Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outlier. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. Throwing is Stafford. That'll be caught. It's Cup. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 39. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. Back now in Los Angeles. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. On first down at Stafford. He's got Higby complete right side. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. Here's Stafford. Throw right side going to be caught by Higby. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 22-yard line. Stafford going to give this to Akers. And they can't bring him down. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Cam Akers, 22 yards. And the Rams get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Crosby connects on the extra point as they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. Well, they don't really need the points here, Charles, given what we're looking at on the scoreboard. But they've scored on three consecutive possessions, three consecutive drives. And I'm sure that they would like to keep that streak going here and continuing to pour it on. And things have gotten that way in the NFL, haven't they, partner? Because in the old days, people would, you know, they'd get off the gas a little bit, right? But now, people continue to accelerate. But we'll see what they decide to do as they come out for this one. But the way that this game has gone, they've got to be awfully happy with their execution overall. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. 23 yards to pick up there. Play action. Now it's Carr. His throw incomplete. Well, at this juncture, CD, you normally see teams pack in the passing game. They've got the huge lead. Not them, though. They're still taking their shots. I remember reading in past history, there was a college football coach in the Hall of Fame whose nickname was Close the Gates of Mercy. Now, he wasn't really big on that. He was big on going ahead and scoring. He's got to reincarnate it right here. We're watching it in front of us. Right 
27 yards there, a first down. Now Carr. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. On play action, now Carr rolling to his left. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. They fake the handoff. Now Carr on the move to his left. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. It'll wind up going as a sack and a loss of two. And now the task gets more difficult here on third and goal. Third down, goal to go from the eight. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Give him four yards there, but they're still well short of the goal line with fourth down now looming. The kick by Lutz is good. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taking it about the one. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. Facing a big fourth quarter deficit here, things not looking good. You know, this offense, though, they've been in the top half of the NFL so far this season, but in this one, well, their defense has really struggled. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Stafford. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. On first and 10, Stafford. Short throw, it's Higby. There he goes, left side. Down the left sideline. And he's all the way down to the 13-yard line. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. From the red zone now, Stafford. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Here's Stafford. Under pressure, they got him again. Isaiah Foskey brings him down. So now Stafford and the Rams after the sack. Now they're staring up at a third and long. Looking to throw. And he's got this to Jefferson. He'll get 17 back there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Now Mason Crosby on for the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Crosby is good, and they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. And that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they just continue to roll right along, really. This has the looks of yet another victory as they hope to polish it off here in quarter number four. Completes it to Perry. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A good pickup there, 26 yards. Carr going to throw here. 
Into the hands of Perry, complete. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. On first and ten, here's Carr. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Perry. And he'll be out of bounds. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. Well, business as usual for them. Well on their way to another victory. Riding a serious wave of momentum from what we've seen. And so far, they haven't met their match. So if you're going to play this team in the future, your mission is clear. You better be ready to play and match their firepower. The Saints offense and Derek Carr, they're still on the field, so they figure to go for two here. And they'll try a little razzle-dazzle. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. I know we could sit up here and dance around it a little bit, but going for two in this situation... Somebody doesn't like someone else. There's no doubt in my mind. Well, what they couldn't see is you lean back in your chair and you went, I mean, you, yeah, that's, that's not a good decision. They didn't get it, though. Yeah, I don't think you just say, well, my kicker's hurt in this spot. No. No, okay. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory. But it does not appear that that's going to be the case. There's too much to handle on the other side of this one. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. Certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense, a complete team victory. So for the Saints, they are now two wins away from a perfect regular season as they run their mark to 15-0 on the year. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week where they take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Meanwhile, for the Rams, the slide continues as they drop now to 3-12. And, and they'll look to regroup next week as they head to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Giants. I'm Brandon Gordon, certainly.